Full frame cameras are a scam. I know that's kind of a harsh statement. However, this is the theory I've been using for the last couple of years and it has yet to steer me wrong. So today, I'm gonna give you the reasons that I see that speaks to why full frame cameras are being overvalued and are basically a scam for most photographers. Oh, and I'm hopefully getting some cool photos along the way. So what exactly about full frame cameras do I consider to be a scam? Well, to answer that, I got my hands on this Sony a7R 5 and I'm gonna set it up against my Sony a6500. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so before I get really into it, I wanna say, of course, full frame cameras have their place, and of course, they create amazing images. And this video is not to say that you should never buy a full frame, or if you have a full frame that you need to sell it immediately. I just want to show you that full frame cameras might not be the ideal camera for every single situation. It might often even be overkill, working against you, or simply just be too expensive. Yeah, I'm sorry for the sun. Um, If we take a look at the cameras I'm comparing today, on paper, the Sony a7R5 are by far the better choice. With a full frame sensor, 62 megapixels, dual base ISO, 8K 24 frames per second, 4K 60 frames per second, and 1080p 120 frames per second, and up to 10 bit video, 5 axis in body stabilization, and amazingly 693 autofocus points. Compare that to my Sony a6500, we have a crop APS-C sensor, 24 megapixels, single base ISO, crop 4K 30fps video, and 1080p 120fps 8-bit video. Still with a 5-axis in-body stabilization, but with only 425 autofocus points. And even if we take a look at the updated camera, the a6600, it still doesn't change. But the thing is, you even see the quality difference if you don't private study the photos? And if so, does it even matter? Do people even care? Or would you be better off spending your time and your money on something else entirely? You've probably seen the videos where people compare the photos and videos from iPhones to personal cameras where you had to guess which is which. I'm going to try and do the same, but also be a little more scientific about it and do a little bit of math. To so get that out of the way, the one thing about a full frame camera is that you cannot argue against the fact that if you have 50mm 1.2, that's exactly what you're going to get. If you put the same 50mm on your APS-C or a micro third, you're going to have the crop factor. My Sony a6500 have a crop factor of 1.6 means that I have to multiply the 50 mil by 1.6 and that means that the photos that I would take on my APS-C cam would be equivalent to an 80 millimeter on a full frame body. And not only that, you also have to multiply the f-stop. So that means that if your lens has an f-stop of 1.2, that means that you have to multiply the f-stop 1.2 as well. So that means that it becomes a 1.9, which doesn't seem like a lot. However, if we set the APS-C camera to f10, it would be equivalent to an f16 on a full frame body. This does seem like a negative lens manufacturers know this and they have corrected for this and made lenses specifically for these types of cameras. But not only that, it can also be beneficial to have a crop factor. For instance, if you had a 70 to 200 mil, if we zoom all the way in, that would be equivalent to a 320 millimeter lens. And if we use a two times teleconverter, all of a sudden we had 640 millimeter just out of that one lens, which is just insane. But with that out of the way, let's do some photos. All right, so here we have the photos. Can you tell which one of these photos are the full frame and which one is the APS-C? Is it A or is it B? How about this one? Is it A or is it B? Remember, the full frame camera has 60 megapixels while this one only has 24. How about these two? Which photo is the full frame camera? What about these? Is it A or is it B? Write down your guesses down in the comments and you'll get the answers later in this video. 
I hope this helped get my point across. You don't need 60 megapixels on a full frame camera in order to get great photos. Now, let's take a look at their size. Full frame cameras are both bigger and heavier than smaller sensor cameras. But not only that, but the bigger sensor also demands bigger glass, which means that you're both stuck with bigger and heavier lenses as well. And this, of course, is not ideal if you like to travel or if you tend to walk around with your camera for hours. So if you're a wedding or event photographer or a landscape photographer who likes to hike to their destination, or even if you're a street photographer who likes to be a little more inconspicuous, or if you're simply just going on vacation, a big heavy setup like full frame camera gives you is not ideal. Now, you're probably saying something like, but I want to print my photos. And I hear you. The usual guide for printing photos says that your image needs to have a 300 ppi or ppi, which stands for touch per inch or pixels per inch. That means that with my 24 megapixels on my Sony a6500, I can print a photo that is up to 20 inches or 50 centimeters on the longer side, while on the Sony a7R5, I'm able to print 31 inches or around 80 centimeters on the long side. And that means that if you have two and a half times more megapixels, you can only actually print a photo that is 1.6 times larger. So that's a lot of megapixels from very low print and therefore it might be a little bit of a bad return on your investment. But that being said, megapixels aren't all. I've made multiple prints up to 87 inches or around 200 centimeters and they look amazing. What you need to keep in mind when printing is not only the size of your photo but also the material you're printing on as well as the viewing distance. It's the same reason you don't have the same distance to a 65 inch TV as you do your monitors or even your phone. The closer you're viewing your print, the higher the DPI needs to be in order to keep it looking sharp. But if you're printing your photo on a canvas, most of the smaller details are gone anyway. If you've watched until now, you're probably still wondering what makes a full frame camera a scam. And that's because I've still not talked about price. I know you can get an expensive crop sensor camera as well as a cheap full frame, but if we look at the same generation full frame cameras as well as a crop sensor camera, the full frame will cost you more. And not only that, the full frame lenses will also be more expensive. The files on the camera will be way bigger, which means that you have to get faster cards you also need to get faster cut readers and more and more storage. Or, God forbid, you have to delete your photos. And usually when you ask people what type of camera you should get, most people agree that the full frame camera is the superior one and therefore that is the way to go, even if people differ on the brand. But from what I can see, 90% of people don't need the full frame sensor and are just getting tempted and locked into buying more expensive gear with features they don't even need. All right, so now to the answers of the photos before. With these two, this one is the full frame camera and on this one it is this one down here on these two it was also the one down here and on this set it was these guys up here so how many did you get and what difference did you see or did you even see any also check out this video about the best types of lenses is it zoom is it prime check it out thank you all so much for watching i'll see you next time